so my car, mm -hmm. did I tell you what it was? No. So, the reason that I couldn't come to school yesterday uh -huh. is that the 10-minute uh, oil change folks, yeah. they uh, took their uh, wrench to my oil filter yeah. so tight that they punched a hole in it. Nice. And so it was leaking through the oil filter. So that's where my oil leak came from and my unnecessary trip to the mechanic. Um, this one time, my, they, they told me I couldn't get my oil changed because they couldn't take off the screw. Uh huh. And I was just like, I literally went next to her and I'm like, what are they talking about? <laughs> like, it was, I did it with my hand. And I was like, man, these guys are lazy. Yeah. I once had them, see, I had the opposite thing happen. I had them cross thread mm -hmm. my oil pan screw on one of the cars I had. Yeah. And then I couldn't change the oil after that. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah. But that, car also leaked oil, so I just kept putting it in there, like I just had to put like a cord in, like it, yeah. it was bad. And like the, the, the people I was renting a room for from did not like it because, you know, I was leaking all kinds of oil on their newly, newly, uh, what's the word, paved driveway, it was, yeah. it was, it was very controversial. Okay, so last time we wrote the um, fundamental um, theorems for um, you know, classifying modules, or finitely generated modules over a principal ideal domain. And um, so I'll see here, let me just start us with a, another example. So we could do like, I'm trying to pick one I didn't do already. I don't think I did this one. C4 cross Z2 uh, cross Z3. C4, Z2, Z3 cross Z3. I have lost track of where I was. 4, 2, 3, 3 cross 25. If I already did this one last time, my apologies. So this is the elementary divisor form. Of the module, right? Mm -hmm. And then, on the other hand, we can put invariant factor form. And let's see if I can find my place again. So I did, what did I, what did I just have? Four, and then you would, Four, two, oh man, where was I? Four, two, three, three, twenty-five. Four, two, three, three, twenty-five. So that would be Z6 plus Z300. All right, so these are um, another, so we were going through cases of the finite abelian groups of order 1800. Yeah. And, um, so, I have um, the list here of all of them, I'm using some very low tech. <laughs> so there's there's all of them. Um, unfortunately, I have written in my in my notes here, which are these are just sort of summary notes from Dunn and Foot section uh, twelve point one, right? Yeah. Um, I have flipped the order, which is unfortunate because this, what this is, is of course Z mod the ideal generated by 6, right? And this is Z mod the ideal generated by 300. So in this case, A sub 2 is equal to 300 and A sub 1 is equal to 6. And of course we have the, the relation A1 divides A2, right? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, so those are the, um, what are those called? The invariant factors, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, in this case, the 300 is the annihilator. 300 times anything in here is zero. Yeah. All right? Just like 300 times anything in here is zero. Um, because 300, if you did anything in here times 300, 
you'd be able to pick off a factor of 300 to pair with each one of them yeah. that would make it zero. Yes, Matthew, what? Can you have a snack? Can you have a snack? Um, what's in it for me? Um, what kind of snack? Crackers. Crackers. Um, well, yeah, sure. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if, if I think about, I'm, I'm, let me try to explain why 300 is the annihilator for this module, okay? Um, so if I take that 300 and I look at the multiple of 300 times ABCDE, mm -hmm. or ABCDE are respectively taken from Z4, Z2, Z3, Z3, Z25. Yeah. So like, take a 25 and stick it over here. Right? And then that, that leaves you with what? 300 over 25 is uh, how many? 4, 12. Yeah, 12? Yeah. 12, 25s? 300? That sounds right. 3 times 4. Whoa! Why so many? I'm giving one to Isaac and Benjamin. All right. So you got your, and then you take this 12, right? Yeah. And let's see here. So, ooh, how does that work actually? Uh, huh. Four, 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 yes. Yeah, I don't quite see it. Because if I put, I mean, if I put the, Oh, curses. They don't see that. Three hundred six, three hundred six. Z four, Z two, Z three, Z three, Z twenty five. Z three, Z two. Something must be wrong with my thinking, because 4 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 25 is uh, 1,800, isn't it? Yeah. So I can't, it's not, that's not how it works. Ah. Oh. So... I guess I, I, I don't need to use them all at once, right? Yeah. So the thing is, this is 12 times that, right? So it's, you know, it's 12 times A, B, C, D, 0. Yeah. But then, um, so of course I could, um, I'm an idiot. Sorry, Roger. How does this 300 multiply? I mean, I guess it gives me 300. I, I'm not thinking about this right. It's 300A, 300B, 300, yeah, duh, right? Yeah, so um, it'd be 12A. So my, my point is the 300 times that is this, yeah. and those are all, all zero, right? Yeah. Because this has got um, 125 times 4a, right? And this has got um, 150. Yeah, 150 times 2b. And this has got 100 times 3. And this has got you know 100 times 3. Um, let's see. And this has got you know 12 times uh, 25e, right? Yeah. And those are zero. And I don't think you could make do with anything smaller than that to annihilate everything. At least I hope not. Like, can you make everything zero there using some number less than 300? Because if you can, what I've written is bogus.
We need the 25 to get the Z25, right? Yeah, but you need that 4 kind of messes you up. And you need the 4, so that gets you to 100. Yeah. And you need the 3, so that gets you to 300. Yeah. But you don't have to put 3 twice. That's yeah. why 300 is enough. Yeah. I think now that we've done this, we can figure out another one, right? Like, yeah. So, like, for example, if we do, say, Z4 cross Z2 cross Z3 cross Z3 cross Z5 cross Z5. Right? Mm -hmm. What's the annihilator here? Let's see. I'd say 60. So we need a we need a four. That can, the four gets rid of the two. So like a sixty work. And a three and a five, right? Mm -hmm. So four times three times so sixty. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure. Yeah, because yes, yeah, sixty. That work. Yeah, I think so. Um, forty. No, I don't think that's right. Forty would be ten. Sixty-two. Sixty-six. Maybe. No, you're right. It was it was sixty. Is it 60? Uh, 60 divided by 4? Uh, so the reason 60 works is you need 4 to get the Z4. Right? 2 won't do it. Yeah. Um, but once we have a 4 in the fact in the annihilator, mm -hmm. if that's one of our factors, it kills everything that's a power to. Yeah. Oh, up okay. to 4. Um, so it kills the 4 and 2. And then one copy of 3 gets the Z3 and the Z3, right? Because we yeah. have three of both those, that gets us to 4 to 3 is 12. And then, in contrast to the one above, we don't need a 25, we just need a 5 to kill Z5. Because five, 5 times Z5, Z5 is, is 0. So the annihilator here is, is 60. And then 1800 divided by 60 gives you 30. So that's the other one. Because the counting here is, we're looking at a billion groups of order 1800, so like it has to be that the total order of everything is 1800, right? Yeah. 4 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5, 1800. 30 times 60, 1800. But um, of course over here, the annihilator is 60. And then these are the invariant factors, a1 and a2. a2 is the big one. All right, so that's just an example. Um, now, as I was saying before, this is the elementary divisor form. This is the invariant factor form. Um, and we can also talk about the primary decomposition. So the primary decomposition like, would be, in this one, there's the primary piece coming from prime 2, coming from prime 3, and coming from prime 5. There would be three primary components. Um, I mean, there's always three primary components of all of these, mm -hmm. because they all, have, they all have the prime 2, the prime 3, and the prime 5 yeah. appearing in various different ways. Like sometimes the prime five is cyclic, right? It's a cyclic component. Yeah. Z25 is cyclic, right? Whereas down here, it's not cyclic, it's, it's that. Okay, so um, our goal, right, is to see the primary decomposition theorem um, and the fundamental, the invariant factor theorem and also the elementary divisor theorem put into practice for different modules, right? That's our, basically our, our goal in the next few lectures, all right? Um, so there's two different, two different paths we can go down right now. One is to, um, I, think, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this. This is chapter 10 from an unknown book. I um, had somebody ask me, who's the author of this? And I went, I don't know, I found it online. And he's like, I know, but I also found it online, but where's this from? And no one knows. <laughs> um, at least I don't know. I, I would love to know. If someone could leave in the comments, where, where is this from? That would be nice to know. But <laughs> nevertheless, if you search, Google it, that works for you, and you'll find this thing. And so, um, um, it's very, very nice um, handout in terms of um, 
understanding of alien groups. All right, so I want to show you, I want to show you this because this is a good warm up for the Smith normal form. Um, they're both actually sort of in the same ballpark of um, ideas, and so let's let's look at this here. Oh man. See, yeah, see, I need to get a new board. This thing is. This thing it says chapter 10 of finality. Can you find it? Possibly. It looks to be in the same form, but I'm not sure. It's not with LaTeX. I'm pretty sure this is the uh, Microsoft Word generated monstrosity. But, I mean, I can't complain too much because the mathematics in this thing is. Um, it's very nice. Um, there's a clarity with which he writes about billion groups, which. I don't think I teach with. <laughs> okay, so I can't complain. But um, all right, so here here's the. Let's just talk about finitely presented abelian groups for a bit. So um, he starts out by saying, you know, you might talk about a group like this. A, B, C are the generators, and what are the conditions that they subject to? Well, A to the fourth equals B squared equals one. Um, a, B equals to B, A. Um, a, C equals to C, A. And B, C equals to C, B. Right? So it's like, okay, so this is a way we could d discuss a group, right? A group G that has, it's a finite group, right? Um, and so finitely presented means that you, you have a finite set of generators and you have a finite set of relations which define the uh, you know, interrelations between those. Um, <laughs> I think. Well, all right, so his, 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 his next thing is like, well, if it's a billion, maybe it makes more sense to write this like um, with additive notation, right? So in additive terms, this becomes like 4a equal to 0, 2b equal to 0, right? And then, you know, a plus b equal to b plus a, etc. But then it's like, but you know, since we're only interested in abelian groups, we don't really need to have this baggage of writing out all the commutation relations. Mm -hmm. We should just focus on the interesting relations, like these ones. Yeah. Right? So he's like, this group could be written instead in terms of like an additive formulation. G is, what is it? It's A, B, C. Those are the generators, right? Such that. 4a comma 2b. So your your understanding. So this bracket notation for him means abelian group, and you put the generators first. You put the relations second, and then, um, of course, not content with that. Um, so generically speaking, your G looks something like you've got you know um, x1, x2. Da, 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 let's say XR relation um, XR generators, right? And then you have relations R1, R2, da, 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 let's say M of those. I'm not using his new I'm not using his enumeration, I just made up my own letters, okay? So you got these relations, and what does it mean? The relation, right, has the form what? Like R sub i is equal to A sub i um, one x1 plus a sub i2, x2, plus da da da, plus a sub um, i r, x r, right? And so, hey, if we have the understanding that the, the labels of the generators don't really matter, we might as well just talk about the relations directly. So instead of looking at the group this way, we can just look at the group in terms of the matrix which defines it. And these, since it's an abelian group, these are integers. Okay. All right. All right.
I, you can kind of see it up here. But, I mean, you could have more interesting things like 2a plus 3b equals to 0 or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so really, we can just replace the abelian group with a, with a matrix. And what, what kind, what by what matrix? A, um, uh, I by R? Yeah, I is an Or one by R? I is ranging from 1 to M, right? Yeah. So we have a, this is going to be a, you know, it's going to give us, it's going to define an M by R uh, relations matrix, right? Which basically defines the group. So his first example is, he's like, um, eight zero zero, zero eight zero, zero zero eight, two two two. That defines, this you could interchange with the abelian group, A, B, C, such that what? What are the what are the relations here? So okay, so the first one's M. Um, so it'd be eight A equal to zero. Mm-hmm. Eight B equal to zero. Mm-hmm. Eight C equal to zero. Mm-hmm. And then two A equal to two B equal to two C. Can be that. Oh okay. yeah. Right. I mean I don't write equals zero in this yeah. notation, but yeah. Understood. It's 8a equals to 0, it's 8b equals to 0, it's c equals to 0, and all that, right? Okay, so it says, essentially, a finitely presented abelian group is a system of homogeneous linear equations with integer coefficients, all right? And um, so, like, his example two, he just, got, he just gives us the 888, Right? And he says, if this is the matrix that describes your group, then this says that G is just, you know, Z8 cross Z8 cross Z8, because it's three generators which are defined by multiples, A times the generator is zero, right? So that, that's exactly Z8. It's the direct product of Z8, Z8, Z8. So, and then his next example, he's like, if you had a row of zeros, right, what would that mean? You could just do, um, basically you'd have, X, Y, Z, such, such that eight X equals you know eight X equals to zero. So sometimes, sometimes he writes out the equation. Sometimes he didn't. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay, I'm not gonna complain. All right. So, okay. what is this? This group. So you have it's an abelian group, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a generator Z. It's got no no terms and conditions. That means it is the integers. Yeah. So this is z8 cross z8 cross z. So a um, a zero just means that there's no conditions on the generator. So it's just a copy of z. And um, he points out that he starts writing that this is equivalent. To eight zero 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 eight zero, so that that calculation is going to become useful. This sh short shorthand there, we just drop those. All right. So to start with, he he now goes on to in the next two pages to describe that it's meaningful to do elementary row operations, and then later elementary column operations to define a matrix to understand what that matrix is.
what that group is. Yeah. Now the elementary row operations just corresponds to like adding or subtracting or swapping the order of the defining relations. That, that makes sense. Um, and of course we can't divide by 8, that's not allowed right here. But what you can do is multiply by minus 1 and 1. You're only allowed to, you're only allowed to do row operations based on the units of um, the ring over which this module is built, right? We're dealing with a, this is an abelian group, this is a Z module, right? Mm -hmm. So the relations matrix, we're working with Z module math um, as it happens. Um, so I, I think, well, let's see here. So, tell you what, rather than going through all of his steps, because I think that would be boring, I'm going to skip ahead to the column operations. All right. So here he goes. He's got three, three, six, eight, four, zero, zero, twelve, twelve. All right. That's the um, example six for him. This is the relations matrix, right? Mm -hmm. So he points out that this is, you got yourself A, B, C, E, such that what? 3A plus 3B plus 3C, 6C rather, is 0, right? 8A plus 4B equals 0, and 12B plus 12C equals 0, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, so what would happen if we just said, instead, we're going to switch the roles of, say, B and C? So if we said A, C, B instead, you know? What would that do to these? to be in the C. 3A plus 3C plus 6B rather equals 0. Yeah, then 12B. Well, 12. He leaves ABC here the same. He leaves A, B, C here the same, but he switches B and C in the relations, okay? Um, if I switch in both places, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> this is, I always get fished into that. Um, so 12, well, I mean, this would be 12 C plus 12 B, right? Yeah. But that's the same as this. Yeah. All right. So really, we want to switch one place. Yeah, so leave the, leave the labels the same to start, but just switch the roles of B and C in the relations, yeah? What happens, what's, this, what's the new matrix? Um, we have three, five, three. Three, uh, six, you mean three, six, three, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, eight, zero, four. Mm -hmm. uh, zero, twelve, twelve. Okay. So. So, what is it to get from here to here? What did we do? We swapped what? Um, A1, 2. All right, do you want to go by index or? In terms of swapped columns. Uh oh. Ooh, swapped columns? That's what we did. Oh, so yeah, 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 we swapped column 2 and 3. Yep, swapped columns 2 and 3. So, relabeling the generators and the relations. Mm -hmm. Corresponds to swapping columns. Really? So if we just say B and C and C is B, since B and C are the second and third columns, it corresponds to swapping columns two and three. 
in the now would that change it should be fairly clear that doing that gives you another group which is isomorphic not a different group. It's just a different labeling of the same structure. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, if you doubt it, you can explicitly write down an isomorphism of a given group between this thing and that thing. If you want. Yeah. Um, then example seven is a little bit harder. He does. Um, see, what I was going to ask Jenny to get me at Walmart was. Those new markers. The new markers are just all dead. Tell you what. And the board is thirsty. <laughs> See if any of these are better. Mm, that's a little helpful. So he's got. 3, 6, 3, 8, 17, 4, 0, 5, 2. And that is, he's using x1, x2, x3. All right, such that, of course, 3x1 plus 6x2 plus 3x3 equals 0. Yes, 8x1. Didn't Matthew already get you a snack? Could I have some of the cream? Give me water, please, Daddy. Um, I could probably get you water, please, yes. Cold water? Cold water? Oh, I don't know about that. That's too much. It's ice and water. Ice and water. I will get some water. You'll get it for him? Thank you. Ice and water, please. So what he does now, <laughs> In this example, as he says, okay, let's suppose we make x1 prime. So train our existing generator x1. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, please be quiet, okay? For x1 prime is x1 plus 2x2. Alright. And um, of course, then what's x1 equal to? Okay. Uh, x1 prime minus 2x2. So we take these, all right, and we rewrite these in, oh, terms, in, terms, of X1. X1, in terms of X1 prime, right? Okay. So you've got three X1 prime minus two X2 plus six X2 plus three X3, eight X1 prime. Minus 2x2 plus 17x2 plus 4x3. And uh, what is this here? 5x2 plus 2x3, right? And so from that, we can kind of skip a step and just go straight to the matrix, right? With the matrix. I mean, we only care about x1, right? We don't care about the other ones. It's like swapping. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, now our, our, our new one is going to be x1 prime, x2, x3. It's a matrix yeah. based on those generators. Yeah. So, um, we've got 3x1 prime, right? Yeah. The next one's got an 8x1 prime, 0. Uh, Let's see here, we got three, we got zero x2s, right? For the first relation, how many x3s do we got? Still got three of those. So three, uh, zero. Uh, still got three. And then we have eight. Um, that's minus 16. Minus 16 one. plus okay, x, just one, thank you. Uh, four. Four. And two and five, zero. Five, so five and two, right? Yeah. All right. So now my question for you is, what column operation goes from here to there? <clears throat> I would point out first of all, column one, nothing happened to it, right? Yeah, column one and three. There are no question. 
Everything's yeah, happening column three. Everything's happening. Something's happening in column two, right? I, I would say column two would be two times to one minus two. So column column two new is you say it's uh, column two minus two column one. Column two minus two column one. Yeah. I wonder if I did it right. <laughs> Zero, one, five, three, four, two. Yeah, we got the matrix right. And he said, yeah, it's it's C two minus two C one. C two minus two C one is what we did. So you notice that there's some kind of there's some kind of funny business going on here, right? Yeah. If we engage in replacing um, replacing generator one with generator one plus two generator two, that corresponds to Picking our old column two and replacing it with new column, well, replacing our old column two with new column two prime, which is C two minus C one. So notice first of all that there's a, um, there's not only is there a swapping of, there's a minus instead of a plus. There's also yeah. a flippy floppy of what you might yeah. possibly expect in terms of the enumeration. But nevertheless, the larger point here is this is not a new group. This yeah. is the same group. So we have license to, of course, we, always, we already have license to add equations, subtract equations, multiply by minus one, swap the order. Of, those are all row operations. Yeah. Now we have license to do what? We can swap columns. Yeah. That corresponds to relabeling generators. And like reduce, or reduce column echelon form, I guess. Yeah, and we, and we can also swap columns like this. Yeah. That's just a relabeling of generators. Yeah. And those are taking you to other relations matrices for corresponding isomorphic abelian groups. Yeah. All right. So let's see here. I'll let you try to start here. So why don't you see if you can chew on this one for a second here? Yeah. See if you can figure out, since this is example 8, but I'll let you work on this one. 10, oh, come on. That's why I wanted to go to one more. Can you mark 10? you work on that for a minute. I'll be back. What, what's my goal? Your goal is to simplify this. Oh, okay. and see what see what group it is. So we'll do B six zero. I mean, your goal is to get to one of these kind of examples, to basically get to this diagonal form, right? Better yet, 
you want to get to a form where it's got diagonals and there's a divisibility between the diagonals because that would correspond to the uh, you know, um, invariant factor form. See, we're, we're going to be able to simplify the matrix until we can see that we put the abelian uh, the Z module here into its um, invariant factor form. These calculations are what are roughly. You're back. Oh, put it right by Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this because we don't get stuff anymore. And it's gonna take us a bunch of steps to get this one out of you think, Is it supposed to be a, a, a diagonal? Like a straight up diagonal? You can get you can always always, always, always convert it to be diagonal. With row you got row and columns. You know you got both both row and column operations. Oh yeah, 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 yeah I can do row too. Yeah, you got row and column operations to work with. But remember. Okay. Only integers. Subtraction, oh. multiplication by minus one, um, integer linear combinations, these are the, the, the what we got to work with here. So uh, essentially your goal. I got them. So I'll try to track with you. What's the first thing you did? Please put it in words. What was the first thing you did? Um, the first thing I did was subtract this by this two by this column. You subtract column three from column. Yeah, by two. Oh, you subtracted two copies of column three yeah. from column two. Yeah. I think that's I think that's allowed. Oh, I'm uh -oh. outside. Yeah. So I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write it column two minus two times column three. Yeah. That's okay. See, so the first one you left alone. Yeah. And this gave you what you get? Six. Yeah, six zero two four eight eight. Six zero and then what? Four eight eight. Is it four eight eight? Yeah, six zero two four eight eight. Six oh six zero two four eight eight. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. we didn't do anything to that one. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Uh, from there, I did, um, I believe I did 1, or I, yeah, I did C1 minus C2. C1 minus C2, okay. So, you know how these sort of things... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Oh. C1 minus C3. C1 minus C3. Yes, yes. That makes more sense. My numbers were added. So you, uh, C1 minus C6. 646. Four, four. Six. Oh, 46. 646. Six. Yeah, and then it's this thing. And then? Uh, C1 minus C2. Uh -huh. Now, there, there is a strategy to go about here, and I, I, I couldn't tell you what it is. I, it's been a while since I've done these, I've forgotten the strategy. Then I did... Let's see what I did. Mm -hmm. I did... Uh, <laughs> we can see why you're getting zeros on the diagonal. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I flipped the run, I flipped the columns around. I think that's the opposite of what we want. Uh, yeah. I, I, I flipped the columns around eventually. Yeah, I flipped the columns. Um, I, I did... Um, you you wrote swaps too, you know? Yeah, I, I flipped... Wait, I gotta... I'm trying to see how I got... Oh, I did uh, C3 mm -hmm. minus 2C1. 
3 minus 2c1. Yeah. So then that gives us 0, 4, 4, 6, 0, 2, um, still 4, no 0, and what? Um, is that also 0? Four. Uh, you got 4, 0, 0 for your last one? Did I say that? Um, 4, 0, 0, 6, 0, 2, 4, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0 4, yeah. And then, yeah, I flip, I also flip the rows in the same thing. Okay, now you're, now what are you going to do? Um, let me make sure. Uh, da, 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 da. I think what you can do from here uh -huh. is C is row two yeah. minus, I mean, row three minus row two. Okay. Essentially, just restructured them so I had diagonals. So, wait, wait, wait. what are you going to flip? You're going to do a column swap and a row swap? What are you going to do? You know, you swap, you do? I mean, the first thing we can do is get rid of the six, I guess. So, row one. Oh, you can do that first? Yeah. Row one minus three, row two, three. And then we can swap, then we can flip around because we have. Structure for diagonals. Let's see here. So now we can let's let's, let's flip rows one and row three. Yeah. So that would give us I can't see. I'm an idiot. Um, zero two zero. Uh, oh, I, I four I, zero yeah. zero right? Yeah. And um, zero zero four zero zero four. So I've got the now I've got that where I want it. Yeah, there's one more flip. Oh, you're doing columns? Yeah, columns, columns swap. I was going to do another row swap. I think it's easier to do a row swap. One, row one or row two. Oh, but I want this. Oh. But you're right. <clears throat> if you had row swap, you would have the four up here and the two down there. Yeah. Which those should be asked for one Oh, yes. Yes, that's the thing is you can... Yeah. In principle, you can make, you can, you, right, you can do this kind of Rubik's Cube kind of yeah. three-dimensional Rubik's Cube of moving the diagonals any which way you want. Yeah. But also, um, you can put the diagonals, basically, what well, my point is, is if you had, if you had a bigger matrix, right, mm -hmm. you can always make it something like zeros, and then a1, a2, to the am, where a1 divides a2 divides a3 divides divides a m. You can put them that way, and if you did it that way, then this matrix would correspond to the invariant factor form theorem oh. that we before. So, like this tells me, this tells us that, that the group is actually isomorphic to what? Um, z2 cross z4 cross z4. Uh -huh. Which is good, also what he says. Okay. So this is what's known as a, uh, this is a Smith normal form calculation. Okay. Um, where it's like a Smith, I, I should be careful. Maybe Smith normal form is only for working over the FX module generated by linear transformation over vector space. Um, but this is the same thing. I mean, when you can do both um, row and column, both row and column operations, um, the yeah, on the matrix, which with the relations matrix for finitely generated. And it also, and if you if you read, uh, and, and you know, if you have time and you care, 
I would encourage you to read this. You know, it's about 12 pages. Yeah. He pretty much explains how we can use this calculation to prove the fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian groups, that any finite abelian group can be written as the direct sum decomposition of like so many copies of yeah, the integers yeah, yeah, yeah. and z mod p, you know, yeah. one z mod p2 and so yeah, forth. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, this sounds like a lot easier for two. Right, I mean, you know, it's special to this particular module. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense you should be able to find a nicer proof for just one module as opposed to like yeah. a general abstract. Yeah. I mean, what's in dumb and put is an argument which works for an arbitrary finitely generated module over yeah. a PID. Yeah. And so those arguments are necessarily general. They don't have mm -hmm. the fingerprints of just the integers on them, right? This is just for Z modules. Yeah. This current argument. But the same calculational scheme can be applied to the FX module for linear transformation, right? Yeah. Now, before I do that, I want to talk to you about an application of this called the Alexander's group of a knot. That's at the end of this thing. Mm -hmm. So, so this, you know, this is, I think this is actually from like a number theory course or something almost, because like the middle part of it mm -hmm. is Euler's theorem and the Chinese remainder theorem. He has a proof of the Chinese remainder theorem. It's like three lines long. Wow. His proof of the Chinese remainder theorem is just like, what? I'm so used to seeing the one with calculation. Yeah. Like his, his proof of the Chinese remainder theorem, it, it maybe is not as useful as the proof I give, because the proof I gave you actually allows you to calculate the uh, solution um, of the simultaneous system of congruences and yeah. relatively prime moduli. His is just like using Bazoo's argument uh, and a sneaky, well, anyway, it's a sneaky, sneaky thing. And then he also has some things about the order profile of the group in terms of, he, he explains in here how you can classify a finite abelian group if you have the number of elements of each order. Yeah. You can use that to say, oh, it's this one. And that's only true for abelian groups. Like non-abelian groups, you could have different non-abelian groups with the same number of elements of particular orders, and yet they'd be non-isomorphic groups in the non-abelian case. But in the abelian case, knowing the number of elements of each order suffices to pin it down as that abelian group. And you get some technology that you can't have to explain that. I've never covered that in a course. Oh, maybe I have. It's that, remember that thing we have that what other t-function is yeah. some of the other t-functions yeah. advisors of n? Yeah. It somehow ties into that formula. Other than that, I don't really know. So, I'll talk about this briefly here. Alexander group. Of a knot. Um, so, so what is a knot? Let me try to, I, I, I also have trouble drawing these. I'm going to try. Um, Or not. So, was that not, a joke? Not, <laughs> what is that? Was that a joke? No, not, a, not on purpose, but maybe it was. Um, so, the, the string goes over, around, um, oh, here, that needs to go, it needs to go under here. So, under there, over the other string here, back around, under that one, then it crosses over, behind, back around. Under yeah. On the other hand, you could have the one, it's basically like pretzel knots, you know. Yeah. I'm the worst. All right, we'll try. We'll try.
So over, under, let's do it over here. All right. So notice that this one goes over on that side. This one goes over on this one goes over on the right. This one goes over on the left. Mm -hmm. Here, the right side of the crossing goes over. Here, the left side of the crossing goes over in the middle. And top here, this one goes over, whereas that one goes over. Um, so this is the so-called figure eight knot. And this is its mirror. There's no apostrophe in it, despite my many. I don't know, I've always wanted to put an apostrophe there. But you're not allowed to. Apparently, it means it, it, it is, you know, grammar. So, if we got some string, right, mm -hmm. we can make these dots, and without untying, the string, you could change this knot to that one. Turns out, like if you, you know, took a piece of string and made this knot, you could manipulate it without breaking the string to get over to that, that knot. So there. I think you can quite literally flip it over. <laughs> you think you're right, you just, you just turn it over? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so those are equivalent knots yeah. because you can get one to the other without breaking the string. Yeah. Right. Um, and so the he says the Alexander group of a knot is an abelian group, um, which will be the same for um, equivalent knots. Um, oh, so so essentially knots structured out of isomorphic abelian groups. Yeah. Well, it's not it's not one to one though. He says okay. if two knots have non isomorphic groups, they're an equivalent. Um, however, I should mention, if they have isomorphic Alexander groups, it does not, they might still be inequivalent. It's possible um, to have matching Alexander groups and not be the same knot, not be equivalent knots. Mm -hmm. um, however, if they are equivalent, then they must have equivalent Alexander groups. How do you define the Alexander group of a of a knot. All right. So let me attempt to show you. So here's. I guess I should just stick with one of the pictures I've already got. Uh, this one. So I'll have A, B. Hey, get marker that works. C, D. E, and then F is the outside. And so here's sort of the generic rule. If the crossing looks like this, so here's four regions, and we go the vertical one goes under, but that one goes like that. Then this gives us the relation A plus B equals to C plus D. So you add the adjacent regions, which are on the same side of the crossover and Equal. So like, let's just try to put it into practice here. So if I take this A, B, C, D thing and like draw it over here, sort of straightened out, all right? So I'm going to put B here, C is here, 